I shot my second roll of Ferrani of P33. My first roll is also on my channel. Uh, I do something more like a box speed exposure and development. It was super fine grained, beautiful. Uh, I was very tempted to just repeat that again for my second roll. I bought two rolls. Um, but then I got the idea of like, what if I try to push this film, right? It's, it's a silver rich film. It already leans sort of towards high contrast. Um, you know, my experience with P30 is that you don't get a lot of shadow. There's not a lot, of, not a lot of room for underexposure, if any at all. But I got brave and just went for it. I shot it at 320, so just one stop underexposed from its box speed of 160. And I'm going to share the results. The development is 9 minutes in 90 degree extol, which is a very heavy push, like plus 4. The negatives came out as dense as I've ever seen with fogging. Um, I wouldn't call it... I mean, I mean, as you'll see in the photos, right, it's, it wasn't like enough fog to ruin the photos. But it was a surprising amount of fog. And when I was scanning these, I actually needed to open up my shutter five stops um, compared to my normal. So really dense negatives, which I've just I've never seen from <laughs> before. So um, but hey, here we go. Let's see. I like to share some of my roll details. I did capture that for us. Nope. Oh yeah, this is it. Okay. So, film Frania P33 shot at 320. The lenses, I'm using a Zeiss 25mm ZM lens and then I like a 35mm Summicron version 1. My developer is 90 degree x tall for 9 minutes plus 4 push. Camera is a Zeiss Icon ZM. Uh, these are just random shots of my around my house, the neighborhood, and a walk to Lewis and Clark campus. March 18th is no, that was today. These are I think I shot these on maybe the 16th. Uh, my scanner is a um, uh, a Leica SL2S with the Sigma 70 millimeter macro. It's at 6.3, and the Veloy Easy 35, and I'm using Capture 121. Okay, back to the photos. And if you're looking for like the short version and you don't actually want to see my photos, <clears throat> right? This these turned out great. The grain is beautiful. Um, the push look is awesome. And surprisingly, I actually think if I was going to do this again, uh, which I'm going to, I'm actually going to rate this at like at least 500 maybe even 640 um okay i like the shot because <clears throat> notice that the sun is actually behind this thing you see this flare coming up from above it so this is the morning light right i often get up and you know i, I drop my kids off at the bus at 7 30 and then I go and I walk for 30 minutes or so before I go to work. Um, just a nice way to start the day, right? But how did I get this shot if the sun is behind it? <laughs> <clears throat> well, there's a building on, behind me. And this is a reflection off of a window. Uh, right? The sun is hitting a window, which is reflecting onto this thing. <clears throat> and if I come in here at 100%, Right. It just looks fantastic. Uh, this is the 25 millimeter lens. Right. I, I, I love it. Okay.
And yeah, there's some interesting kind of shapes and tones in here. I sort of think this shot's actually a miss because um, one of the hardest parts of getting this shot is sort of how to deal with the background, right? This is um, a college campus. So there's like, right, it's like stairs and doors and right, there's a building into classrooms. And I, th I, th I think I failed on that. So... Right, it's too sharp and too much attention on the stairs and the door behind it. Um, but it does show off the film, and um, it's also just kind of a placeholder for me to sort of remember things when I go back here and try again. But man, does the film look really good! Now, I shot this one because it almost felt like a crime scene. Um, the way that this black pool of whatever sort of looks like. I'm not going to say the word, but you know what I mean. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know what was going on here, right? If they were just trying to, maybe this was a larger puddle and they were just trying to keep people from walking through a, a puddle... Um, but I'm sort of just using my, you know, my wide angle lens to kind of make a composition out of it. Right. And again, this, this screen looks nothing like what we saw last time, right? This is, it almost looks like this is 400 speed film, given how much the grain has, has shown up. And it's a beautiful grain. Um, and a dense negative. <laughs> yeah. All right. This one was, um, you know, this one I, 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 what I'm trying to kind of show here is like, there's a little bit of lightness of reflections of Right again behind me. There's another window, another building with windows, and some of those wind that window light is kind of making splotches over here. All right, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to show that. Um, and then just you know the interesting. Yeah, you know, I am trying to kind of pull pull the eye in kind of every direction here around the perimeter, and. Um, Sort of this interesting row of, what is that plant? I like these two windows peeking back there. And then again, let's go into 100%. It's really pretty. It's not like an overwhelming grain when viewed out at a hundred percent but it gets really exciting when you go in a little bit um, which you know I'm you know, who's my target audience right it's like it's gonna sound a little crazy but I actually think my target audience is like people with 4k 8k uh, 20k virtual reality headsets like 20 years in the future <laughs> um, that's not true it's, I'm my tar I am my target audience <laughs> um, okay yeah I wanted to bring in some foreground I mean this is that Zeiss 25 right it's a really fun focal length um, I choose the Zeiss lenses because they they have like basically zero distortion. And it is a little crazy that when I look at 24 and 25 millimeter pictures next to each other, I, I don't know what it is, but I always seem to think I prefer the 25. So I shoot 25. Um, but yeah, just look how beautiful this is. Looks really good. You 
you know, I, I, I wanted to, to see like this. It's like, okay, it was like, this is a silver rich film. I want to push and create like this super dense negative and just see what happens. I wanted the whole left side to be black. But there's also this railing that I thought was pretty interesting too. And then I like just sort of what happens with the door here. Right, morning light is fun like this. Now this one was overexposed big time. You can sort of tell, right? But I wanted to use um, 2.8, which on this lens actually has quite a bit of vignetting. You can see it in the sky, right? Um, now that I look at it, I don't know that I really needed 2.8. I probably would have been fine with stopping down. 2.8 is not doing a lot here. Um, But you can see, like, <clears throat> there are places where I can tell I overexposed and it's super dense. And I maybe don't, I don't think I prefer that to where I either correctly exposed or maybe underexposed relative to my target, right, of 320. But I do sort of like this, right? It does give it that real graininess to this midtone here. Um, Right, and then what's the subject matter? It's sort of ridiculous, but I liked... Right, this is a gigantic recycle bin. But, you know, the, these days, people buy the TVs. I mean, what is this? It's a 60-watt TV? I don't know. Some, it is a big TV. Um, can't get it in our... <laughs> how big are our recycle bins going to have to be in the future so we can fit our our our, our TV cardboard in it? All right now I'm switching lenses, so I'm. This is the Leica Summicron 35 version one, and more importantly, this is my cat Goldie. And I went with 2.8 here, which sort it does create a right compared to the earlier versions of the Summicron, you get a softer version, uh, like for for the. Or just the early 50, like a 50s, right? You do get a vintage background, but but um, but also sort of modern, right? It's sort of sort of the middle ground between a modern bokeh and and vintage, right? You get some of these little little, little shapes and things. This is where I would typically go with the Sumalux, but it looks pretty good still. Um, Zoom cron definitely is going to be sharper, right, uh, where you're focusing. Goldie, you're cute. You did your job. Yeah, you can have a treat. All right. Can't have a roll without Amos. So I liked how he was using the book to, like, have a little extra room to stretch out towards the window. Um, and again, like, look how, you know, this... What I noticed when I shot the Ferrania last week was like, it it felt like it had a ton more room on the the high end uh, to hold detail, and so I was just sort of fearless, um, and it holds it's holding this this easily. You know, even with a giant push, let's go look at the grain in here. So now I'm pretty excited about this film. I actually immediately, when I finished looking at these, I went ahead and ordered two more rolls. Um, I only got two, you know, just to try. And now I've got two more coming. And I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, rate it, you know, even even further down, probably 
500 or more 640 which is pretty cool that I, i've been thinking of Ferrani's is really slow but now we've got one that's like getting pretty interesting with being able to shoot indoors um now this is an indoor shot but you can tell there's a lot of window light coming in uh, and i would say this one i i wanted to over i overexposed it um sort of out of fear and i didn't need to um i think the grain on his face which it looks pretty good but i think it would look better if i hadn't if I had dialed back the exposure just a little bit again which is why I'm thinking I'll rate it close to 500 or, or, or faster next time and this, this is sort of the first time I've ever had like a fogged film where I was like not afraid to want to do it again right I'm like okay well these turned out <laughs> um, it's so fogged that I was worried I didn't fix it well enough so I fixed it again and that didn't make a difference so now here's that um sumacron and um i love the shot i've taken my kids out for pie on pie day um, but this was the, the really the only light was the sun which was a which was actually setting and so there's just this like horizontal window light hitting the back of his head so i needed to use um Let's see, I think I maybe even went F2 on this. Or two and a half, two and a half quarter, just a touch more than two. You can kind of see that, right? This is that, the sort of a, the signature look back here. You know, it's tricky when you got two kids and you got a, you're shooting F2, right? It's like who do who do you who do you focus on? But George covered him his face up with his drawing, so I went with Ellery. Oh, you know what? Actually, I switched. I I thought I only shot two lenses. This is actually um, the Sonar fifty Sonar ZM. Right, just beautiful background drop off and if you watch my channel I talk about Lewis's favorite spot and this is it sometimes it's a step down here but you know cats like kind of where they can get up high but also feel safe and see things but so this is his spot alright if we get in here and I really wanted to give this a lot of exposure so that his he would show up some. Um, and look at this like the spec here, which has a ton of exposure, still looks really good. Uh, I tried a few different angles of him. He was being let's see his tail's down here. I wanted I like this one where his tail came up and sort of where he's hiding behind the wall, right? I also liked, you know, the way this the side of the stair here showed up with mid tones. All right, now I've come around the other side, and guess what? There was another cat up here. So he thought he was safe, right? He's like, "Oh, I'm in this safe spot," but this is Goldie back here plotting, plotting a. You know, to take over his spot. And that 50 sonar is almost like, I almost wish I had stopped it down a little bit. Like, Goldie's almost too blurry, right? I don't know. Maybe not. All right, my favorite test shot. Uh, this one is, let's see, I'm going to actually change the order here. Let's see, 46 needs to go first. Okay, so this is shot at box speed. And then this one is at 320. And then this one is at 720. Sorry, 740. Uh, 
And that's where I'm like, whoa, I could have underexposed this relative to box, right? Even more. I could have rated this at 640 or 800 and still, and still had good images. Um, I'll show those again. And if anything, the only one that sort of stands out as not as good is the one that was 160. Uh, it was just too much exposure and, um, and um, development. All right, so that's 100% on all of them. So this grainier one, which, I mean, I, I say that, but I actually like the grain, right? So it's like m larger, more pronounced grain um, on the box speed. Well, it's going to come into this thing here. I mean, they all look they all look good, right? The one that was box speed definitely has more grain. But then, if we kind of come into these highlights, right? I I sort of gave myself a lot this one, which is two stops more underexposed compared to this one, right? That I gave myself a lot more room for the highlights to to have space because I was shot this one at. 700 or something so you can just see that you can really tell like this is almost fine grain compared to this stuff so they all turned out very usable in terms of kind of tones and you know what I was able to get in terms of out of the shadows right um, it's mostly a, a, a difference of grain But yeah, so I got another roll coming. And then it's like, you know, can I use a, a Ferrania product now to do indoor family photography, right? I could not with P30. Um, so again, like, so this is pretty normal shot for me, right? A little more light than normal. You can tell there's still, there's a lot of window light coming in. Um, this worked. This looks. This looks good. All right now, we're into a familiar place where I actually have lots of double X experience, and I don't know that I'm like, like, oh, this is way better than I would get from double X. Um, yeah, there's maybe, uh, yeah, you know, it's almost just kind of like reminding me of double X. But again, I think I, I think I could have stopped down another stop. And still got this shot. Maybe even even looked better. And I'm back to the Sumicron now. Oh, and these the shower the shower scene. Those were the. These are the Sumicron. Uh, oh yeah, so Ellery. So this is the day before. St. Patrick's Day, and they have made their blueprint for catching leprechauns. And they made two traps. So they're showing their mom their plan, their leprechaun trap plan. Um... I like I like this is at two point eight, right? Stopping down the the Sumicron just a touch, really um, makes the backgrounds much. I don't know. I hate to say modern because it's a, a lens from the '60s, but yeah, just sort of makes them softer, gentler. <clears throat> yeah, two point eight again. And I'm focused on my cat's tail, right? I liked how George was holding Amos, right? And this is them making their blueprints. You can see they're starting to get materials out. And it's a pretty serious endeavor here, right? They, 
they're really thinking it through of what's it going to take to catch leprechauns. And Ellery was really sweet that he he liked his idea and he made his trap, but he gave George credit for really coming up with a, a better design. And then back to the film for a minute, right? It's like, it looks pretty darn good. Now this like still live shot. You know, it seems kind of funny when, when I take shots like this because it's like pictures of my own family and of like pictures of pictures, right? But like this scene isn't going to be in my life forever. You know, at some point we replace the photos and maybe we don't even live in this house anymore. And... You know, I love this little scene. Look at my pregnant wife, right? We're out at, uh, uh, what do you call this, out in Oregon, on the beach, rock, something rock. Oh, boy. Um, this is Ellery when he was a little boy. And my wife's belly looks a lot like... Uh, uh, can't think of the rock but um yeah the photo looks really good <laughs> so, um yeah I think um, I've actually switched alright now I've lost track of my lens so there goes that this one could, could be like the Sumacron Probably is a Sumacron. Yeah. <clears throat> Same with this one. Ellery's getting where he likes to look at me for photos. All right, <clears throat> this was super dense. I gave it a lot of exposure because I, I didn't want to lose all the texture in my cat. This is on the shady side and it's early morning and the sun's on the other side of Goldie. And, but it meant that this stuff really got heavy exposure and density. You know, what I'm doing here, right, is I, I, just, I like this balance of the potted plant and my cat. And then sort of this, like, the beginning of leaves coming, right? It's the very spring. could almost start to say spring is coming. And it's just an interesting place for a cat to stop and pause and, like, hang out, right? It's like... What's my cat thinking right now? All right, last shot I wanted to share from the roll is a fun one for me because right, I, I'm a photographer and I take pictures of things like mailboxes and shadows. And my son Ellery went on a walk with me this time and brought his camera. And look at the photo he's taking good shot Ellery uh, if you're interested in how I did this aggressive extol push I made a video um, this week so it's on the channel if you don't have extol or you're not a home developer but you do want to try it uh, my cousin is a owner operator proprietor of a film lab and I asked him if he would offer this development 
and he said he would, so I'll put a link to his his website uh, with a discount code um, in the description. And then, yeah, I look forward to shooting two more rolls of P33. Take care.